Um, and now joining us here on the Bear Report podcast, an absolute legend, a Chicago Bears great, an NFL great, a Pro Football Hall of Famer, and now a reality TV show star. We have Mike Singletary joining us to talk about his latest adventure um, on Beyond the Edge, which will premiere on CBS next week, Monday, March 16th, or Wednesday, March 16th, I'm sorry, at 9 o'clock Central. Mike, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Uh, pleasure to be here. Yeah, so tell us about this. How did you get involved with Beyond the Edge? Um, was it something maybe you were like interested in doing a reality TV show? Um, did you have any interest in the past? What, what kind of got you into it? It was the furthest thing from my mind, uh, to be quite <laughs> honest. Uh, my wife and I were on a walk, and I got a call. Um, and they said, um, you know, this is an opportunity to uh, go to Panama and, and be in be in this program. And we're like, my wife was listening as, as they were saying, um, you know, there'll be snakes and all types of uh, animals there. And, you know, you, it's, it's, it's the jungle. Yeah. And so my wife was just saying, I, I know you're not going to do that. And I said, you know, that sounds kind of interesting. Really? Yeah. I, I said, you know what? I, I think I'll, I'll take a look at it. And so I, I think it's just uh, it's one of those things I thought it was a tremendous opportunity to really begin to kind of tie into uh, the audience that that I'm trying to help in terms of the underserved and underprivileged uh, youth of our country uh, and get out of my comfort zone and, and really get a chance to compete in a really tough environment. It Oh, go ahead, Aaron. Well, I was just saying, just kind of going off of that, um, you know, the changing our perspective, charity is, is what you're talking about, correct? Mike? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So can you just tell us a little bit about that and, and what exactly you're striving to do and how this show is held? Well, when you, you look at our country, particularly in, uh, during the pandemic and, and um, the whole George Floyd uh, incident, I realized coming out of that, um, from looking at what I saw, uh, I just felt like we we, we got to do something. We got to do something different. Uh, what we're doing is is not working. And so um, you really begin to look at the country. And I just felt like if I could uh, have a not for profit organization um, and be able to help our our marginalized uh, youth, underserved, underprivileged, uh, be able to to kind of help them uh, better prepare you know, in the areas of education and health and mental wellness, then um, I really feel like that is the gap in our country. And if we can, if we can help uh, somehow the haves uh, provide goods and services for the have-nots, putting them in a place where the have-nots can, can earn them and, and be able to um, uh, see that that there is a way to de develop pride and and be able to have opportunities out there and be excited about uh, everything before me, then we have a chance to change our country. And that's exactly the platform that we want to use to do that. And, you know, how has the charity evolved um, since you first started? Is it still in kind of a startup phase or is it, is it still is it progressing? Well, the charity, it, it will launch. Um, Pretty much right along with with, with the show. Oh, perfect. Um, it, it's uh, our app will come later, um, but uh, changing our perspective. You know, we've been working night and day trying to get it where it needs to be, so that people will know where to go and and uh, to donate or give funds or whatever it is uh, to to begin to to do the work that has to be done in our country. Well, one thing I thought that you you, you kind of touched on there that is, is is hit very close to home for me over the last few years, especially and stuff that I've dealt with and stuff that I've seen friends deal with is is the mental health aspect of this, right? You know, and 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 that's so big, especially during the pandemic. Uh, I think a lot of people kind of maybe found some of the I don't know if weaknesses is the right word, but some of the, the demons that maybe they didn't know that they were battling until you kind of get in isolation and the different things that happen. Um, so why, you know, kind of in, in what you're talking about with the, you know, opportunities also big, but in terms of the mental health and, and the support that you want to be able to give, why is that so important to you? 
Well, I, I think it's important for a number of reasons. Number one, I, I think uh, during the pandemic and all of the isolation, people realize that that we're created to to be around each other. We're, we're created, uh, we, we need each other. Uh, and I, I think people really, really uh, begin to understand that and feel that during the pandemic. Um, you know, the other thing is, you know, each and every day we have thoughts and, and some of those thoughts are negative. And to be able to um, debrief at the end of the day or have somebody to talk to about what I'm feeling, what I'm thinking, you know, is this, is this normal? Is this right? And be able to have somebody to bounce that off of makes all the difference in the world rather than continuing to have those same negative thoughts day after day. And rather than having them uh, diffuse, you, you continue to just let them pile up. And I think that's where a lot of the problems start. Going to the show now, um, Beyond the Edge, and you talked about you're in the jungle, there's snakes, spiders. You seem like a fearless guy. You were a tough guy in the football field. I, I watched you play. I'm, I'm 33, so I got to see a little bit of your career, and I've seen tons of highlights, tons of stories from my dad and, and friends and family. Was there anything that scared you going into this? Like, were you? Was there any, I mean, ever a moment where, like, oh, I mean, man. Very honest. There's a lot of things that scared me. There, there, okay. there are things that, that I didn't know um, in terms of insects that I've never seen. You know, you wake up in the middle of the night, and you got this insect sitting on the inside of your net, and you're like, I don't even know if I should shut this thing. I don't even know. I've never seen anything like it. So yeah, it was uh, it was very interesting um, to to be out in the wild, and and of course it was it was pitch black. Uh, once the fire went out, uh, you're like, wow, this is pretty crazy. And then it might rain, and um, you know you you'd have a, a downpour at two or three in the morning, and you just sit there, and and the rain's coming through this this uh, palm leaf uh, uh, roof that you have, uh, it, and it's cold. So it's pretty crazy to, uh, to be in that environment. So, so yeah, there, there were things that were just, wow, you, I can't believe I'm here. Well, I got two questions for you. The first one, so what was the, in terms of animals, not just the bugs, but the animals, what was the scariest thing that you saw out there? The one thing you're like, whoa, what is this thing? You know what? I, I tell you, the, the, the scariest thing is, um, you know, when I think of monkeys, I, I don't I don't uh, think of something scary. But um, one night uh, I'm sitting down and everybody is, is just kind of doing their own thing. We, we, we were kind of uh, some of the guys are going to the ocean and uh, trying to get cleaned off from from that day. And I'm sitting there and I realize I'm by myself. And I look up and they're like uh, four monkeys, oh, uh, man. big, big orangutans. They're just sitting there behind the, the bushes looking at me. And I go, I'll just get this chair and scare them away. And man, when I hit the chair on the ground, they were like, whoo, 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 whoo. And I was like, <laughs> oh my goodness, I, I think I just messed up. I started calling them and say, hey, hey, I need some help over here. <laughs> And uh, but they weren't going anywhere. And uh, that that was pretty much, um, you know, I saw the red in their eyes behind those uh, branches and it was getting ready to be nighttime. And I'm like, man, I saw all I need to do is get in a fight with these things. Yeah, I man, Yeah, I, I can imagine because that's the thing is like I'm a big animal person. And it's like I could I could imagine going into something like that would be fascinating also yet terrifying because you're running into things that you know maybe you've gone to a zoo and you've seen stuff like that but it's like you you've got some protection there so my next question is and this is just kind of for me because i've always been a big mma fan and, and zach and i were actually talking about this uh just before we started recording the show uh what has it been like to work with mara Ronaldo? like he it, for, for those of, uh, for those that maybe have just got in the ufc and some of the other you know mma recently like mara Ronaldo is was basically joe rogan in the mma community before joe rogan was i mean he was fantastic throughout dream uh he's done strike force he's done all sorts of stuff so i'm kind of curious just from your perspective in in working with him what has that been like you know some of the last part of that i didn't hear it kind of cut out on me a little bit on the last part oh i was just asking what has it been like working with uh mauro ronaldo the host you know what it was um when when I think about 
uh, having the opportunity to hear him every night. Uh, he was one of those uh, one of those guys that got a lot of energy and and um, just looking at how he explained things. You know, he said, "Hey, uh, so so Ray Lewis, so how did you how did you feel about that?" You know, every little thing. I said, oh, "Do you have to say it that way?" But so how did you feel about that catastrophe? What did that make you feel? I mean, he he really made you excited um, from day to day, night to night, uh, when we got together to talk about uh, what happened that day. It was um, it, it, it was pretty interesting. He he kept it live. He kept it fun, and um, just a very unusual person, and uh, certainly a tremendous personality. I'm curious because uh, CBS has another show that's kind of similar in, in Survivor, you know, big hit, been on forever. Did you maybe watch any of those seasons or familiar with it to maybe study kind of, I know it's a little bit of a different concept, but kind of study, you know, um, what to do out there or anything like that? You know, what I did, when I knew I was going to be on the show, I, I began to call a couple of uh, soldiers that, that oh, I knew okay. had been in the jungle and uh, was able to ask them, you know, how did you, how did you deal with some of the elements? You know, what are some of the things that you did? And you know, they told you things like when you cook the food or whatever, make sure that you you're outside of camp. Uh, don't let it be in camp because all kind of animals will come. And so I thought that's a heck of an idea. And yeah. it taught me about uh, really making sure that. Uh, you know, in starting a fire, make sure you have the flint and, and you, 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 you create that spark and you got to have uh, dry leaves or whatever it is. I mean, if there was a wealth of knowledge that sounds like it would be common knowledge, but it's not. When you get out there, uh, I'm really thankful that I talked to them. They gave me a lot of tips that really helped. So comparatively speaking, you, you played, you were obviously a Hall of Fame linebacker. You were a you know a, a great football player. How hard was this compared to football? W w on a you know on a scale from one to ten, would you say that playing football was tougher or doing the show was tougher? You know what I I would say this. I, I was asked the question before, and I hadn't really thought about it the way I'm thinking about it in some of these interviews. I said, oh, football is, is harder, but in, in all honesty, doing this show was tougher, and, and the reason why is because in playing football, I, I was in my element. I, I, I knew what to expect. I had my teammates with me, you know, and you got Richard Den and uh, Wilbur Marshall and, and uh, Dan Hampton and Walter Payton. You got those guys. You go into a game, you're going to feel pretty good. But when you're doing this and, and there are times when you're alone uh, and, and, you know, you're working with somebody, but but you're not working with somebody. Um, sometimes that, that can be really tough. And that, that personal challenge, because you don't know what you're going to do, what you're going to, what you're going to be in, uh, what kind of challenges you're going to have, uh, man, it was, uh, it was tough. It really was. You guys have a uh, very interesting and really cool cast, uh, you know, Metal World Peace, Ray Lewis. Um, you have actors, country singers, um, a bachelor contestant out there. What was that like being with a, a just a different, you know, type of mix? I mean, obviously I'm sure you've met Ray Lewis in the past and you probably have a relationship with him. Was there anyone else you gravitated towards out there? You know, there was no one out there that I didn't gravitate towards. Okay. We, we had all of us at some point in time had conversations and uh, deep conversations about life, about religion, about, sports about whatever i mean we we talked about pain we talked about how to get through the next day um and uh so yeah we we uh we all kind of bonded at some point in time you got close to to everyone well if there's one thing that you took away from the show um uh, that you can kind of transfer into real life what would that be appreciation for each and every day appreciation for uh, to be able to have lights and, and to when you're hungry to, to be able to get up and go to the kitchen and and make a sandwich or, or do something. Uh, turning on television, uh, sitting down on, on your couch, 
all of those things when I got back home, man, I, I was so appreciative of being able to lay down in, in a bed. Uh, so I, I would say that that word would be appreciation just for all of the little things that you have that you, you, you don't want to, but you end up taking for granted. And you talked, you said, you you know, you had talks with everyone, you built relationships. Did you get the sense that anyone, you know, ever say like, man, I loved watching you play. or I remember watching you play. Did they, did they call you Samurai Mike? Any of that, any of that stuff? You know, it, 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 they call me Mike. They call me Papa. <laughs> they call me Coach. They call me, um, you know, it was, it was just one of those times where, um, we, we, we just had a great time and it was just, uh, so exciting to be with a lot of great people. And at some point in time, we all laughed at each other, uh, sometimes cried together, however it was, but, uh, it was really a fulfilling time. Well, as I'm sure, you know, we are a, a, a bear, uh, podcast here. So I would be remiss if we didn't ask you a few bears questions here. So, one of the ones I had for you is just your overall thoughts on Roquan Smith. Obviously, linebacker to linebacker, uh, do you think that he can be the face of this defense moving forward under Matt Flutes? Absolutely. Um, for the sake of time, I'll keep that question short, but but I could say a lot of things. But to me, he's an up-and-coming guy, and I'm, I'm really excited about what he can bring. Um, I got one more as a little football related. Then I kind of want to maybe hear something else about the show to end things on my side. Um, what do you think of Justin Fields as a quarterback? I think he has all the potential to be a great one. I really do. Uh, I think he's a leader. I think he's tough. I think he's strong. It's just a, a matter of surrounding him with the right things and then letting him go. Well, and I'll ask the last football question. I'll let ask or let Zach ask the final question here, but. Just your overall uh, viewpoint on the Bears moving forward with this new regime. Uh, Ryan Poles, uh, Matt Eberflus, do you think the Bears are on the right track here? Well, I mean, we're all going to find out soon, but uh, hopefully. I, I think um, I think they tried to make the best decision possible, and uh, time only tells. And then my final question, um, you know, before the show airs, anything like that, is there one thing – that maybe you'd want the audience who watch this to maybe take away from this whole show and experience, maybe something with you or someone else on the show or anything you want to, you know, say in that regards. I, I think that um, there's a lot of tremendous dialogue in, in this show. When you look at the show, uh, there are some conversations that are, that we have there that are really rich and, and uh, filling um, I mean, we talked about a lot of different things. And, and so uh, I'm very excited to uh, sit and, and recollect on, on some of the things that, that happened while we were actually there. So I'm excited to hear it myself. So I, I think it'll be a treat. Mike, thanks so much, man, for joining us. We really appreciate it. We are excited to see this. Um, Beyond the Edge airs on Wednesday, March 16th. 9 o'clock Central, 10 p.m. Eastern. Um, it's on CBS, and we're looking forward to seeing you on there and uh, really appreciate your time again. Thank you very much. Take care. God bless. Take it easy. All right. Thanks, Mike. Really appreciate it, man. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Thank you.